question. Um, what do we say to people who bring up the flood stories like the Epic of Gilgamesh, who experts say is a thousand years older than the Genesis flood story? Okay, I'll, I'll kick this one off. Um, I remember two professors who've been very influential in this. One was a professor of ancient Middle Eastern semantics and semitics um, uh, in Sydney University. And uh, he basically struggled with the biblical um, story, the biblical account, the biblical history, etc. And he said, well, we've got records from Babylon that are so old we can't fit. Um, the, the biblical record into that. And I said, well, hang on. What is your record in Babylon based upon? Because the Enuma Elish and all of these other Gilgamesh epics sort of trace back to secular history, not this story, but the dating of them. Okay, you may remember your biblical account, Adam to Noah, uh, 10 generations, and then Noah and the flood, and then Babel, etc and then Babel, Babylon, all of those Middle Eastern kingdoms. And what the question is all about is, well, if they had a Noah's flood story before the biblical record, then it must have occurred before that. Now, taking the Bible at face value, the Bible says Noah's flood was the first one, regardless of when your record comes from, and Babel, etc., are post-flood, post-Babel uh, records written in recollection or written in rebellion take your pick now i remember asking this professor i said now when you date your middle eastern records how do you do it he said well we have a record of uh, the sun rising in egypt one account and he said if, if you work backwards uh, where the sunrise the moonrise etc from the present day wind the clock backwards which is fairly easy to do on a computer you end up with a date which precedes the biblical record of Noah, etc. I said, now stop a moment. Aren't you assuming that the sun and the moon and the stars have always been in the same place relative to where they are now? He said, yes. I said, tell me, if I suggested that the earth had been tilted, what would that do to your assumption? He said, it would throw it right out. Now, I'm not the first to notice this because the man who noticed this and put it into history was the guy who was made to check Einstein's calculations in the beginning in, in, in South Australia. You need to check up some of these because he noticed one thing. The ancient Babylon, the ancient pyramids in Egypt, the solar pyramids, the solar temples rather, their aisle, the older they got, the further right away they were from the summer solstice. Now, his conclusion was simple. Either Egypt has shifted, the world has shifted, or the sun has shifted. Either way, you end up with a dating problem for the current state of the background to this question. If you change the angle of the solar temples, if you shift the summer solstice, then the dates that the question is based on are absolutely corrupt. Then I asked the professor another question. I said, could you fit all of biblical history into everything known in the Middle East? And could you fit all the Middle Eastern history into the biblical record? His answer was absolutely enlightening. He said, yes, but we don't want to. Now, that is quote, unquote. I could not believe he'd be that blunt with me. In other words, sure, we know there's a contradiction, but we will accept the secular history rather than the biblical one. Why? Scientific reason? No. Why? Historic reason? No. The only reason was we don't want to. Now, that's what I'd encourage you to realize, that all of these questions are actually have a basis in assumptive history, not real history. Okay, the second one is Dr. Clifford Wilson. Now, can I encourage you, as a man, uh, Clifford Wilson was a wonderful blessing to people like me. Not only did he run the Biblical Archaeology Society in Australia, he had been a lecturer in Monash University, one of our more prestigious places, and he also got involved in archaeology in the field. And he wrote several books, particularly on the ancient Middle Eastern records, and he noted one thing. 
the oldest written records are the ones that don't come from Babylon. They come from over in the section just south of where your biblical people, um, you know, Moses, etc., are recorded. So look up Dr. Clifford Wilson, look up his comments on Enuma Elish or Gilgamesh, uh, look up all of those things and you will get an absolutely different view. The question is a good question, but based on a bad, wrong, false bit of data. That's how you have to deal with it in thoroughness. So that's the professor of ancient Middle Eastern Semitics in Sydney, as well as Dr. Clifford Wilson, and you will find those useful resources. Anybody else got a comment they want to put in? Sure. Um, so aside from the dating, right, the thousand years older, the other claim is that, well, why is it a problem if it's a thousand years older? Well, the claim then is that the Israelites copied the Epic of Gilgamesh when they were in captivity in Babylon uh, and effectively wrote it into Genesis, right, which is where the record of the biblical flood comes from. The problem with that comes is that, uh, as John pointed out, uh, and in fact, even as the question points out, there are more stories of a global flood than there is just in the Epic of Gilgamesh. Uh, many of them are claimed to have predated even the Epic of Gilgamesh. Case in point, the um, Sumerian king list, so this is going to be one of the earlier civilizations post-Babel, right? They have a documentation where they believe in a supernatural creation. They believe in 10 pre-flood kings, just like you have 10 pre-flood patriarchs in the book of Genesis, and they believe in a global flood that wiped out the whole world. Uh, now, does that mean that the Epic of Gilgamesh people, the Babylonians, did they steal it off the Sumerians? Because uh, they were a slightly different people group. Well, then you realize that actually you have independent records, not only in the Middle East, but also around the world of a global flood. And what you come to the realization is maybe this isn't they're copying each other. Perhaps the more likeliest explanation is that a supernatural mm -hmm. creation and a global flood actually happened. And what we're actually dealing with are various different renditions, many of which have been converted into mythology, because that's what happens to stories in cultures over time. They get added to them, stories get twisted, languages get changed, and so on and so forth. And you end up with various renditions of a real account, but they are all slightly different. So your Babylonian epic is slightly different from your Sumerian epic, which is slightly different from your Indus Valley epic, which is slightly different, and so on and so forth. The difference between all of these is that uh, the, these stories have all become effectively mythology, right? A, they are impossible because they have, um, you know, depictions of an ark, which is a complete cube. Um, they have or depictions a or a canoe uh, or riding on the back of a turtle or so on and so forth, right? So we've really entered the fairy tale land, right? Once upon a time. Now compare that with the biblical record because the biblical record has some rather interesting things in it. Number one, it carries specifics, yes. right? On the 600th year, on the so on and so forth, 17th day of the month, the uh, windows of heaven opened, right? So it records a specific time. It's not a once upon a time. You also have specifics in the dimensions. arc design as well, mm -hmm. right? In your cubits, which we know are now the best dimensions to be used for, uh, you know, effectively a barge, which is going to sit on the water, um, as opposed to something like a cube. So when you actually compare the fact that all of these are ancient records, all of these are ancient records of the same event. Many of them have fallen into mythology, which is the one that's the most accurate. The Bible is. But it shouldn't be surprised because the Bible is the inspired word of God. And we're told over and over again in the scriptures that God's word will endure forever. It will actually be preserved and it will last. We're also told that God's word is true from the very beginning. And um, so, yes, challenge the, the dating, uh, so to speak but also challenge the fact that all these stories tell us is that the ancient, all ancient cultures believe that these were real events that really happened in the past. Any other comments from the team? Yeah, I, I'd just like to add a couple of things. Um, Josephus, over 2,000 years ago, said that uh, all the writers of antiquities, and he, and he included the, the Egyptians, the Phoenicians, the Chaldeans, all recorded that their ancestors lived a thousand years, which um, ties into the biblical account of uh, the long ages, of course. Um, and in the in the Babylonian stories, um, th there's 
a lot of connections. So there's there is a, some realities that are definitely recorded there. For example, some of the people uh, like um, the King Enmakar. Now it's been uh, pointed out by some scholars that Enmakar is is quite likely Nimrod, uh, who's mentioned in the Bible. The K A R means hunter, or the hunter. And then you get the Enmar, you take, because uh, Hebrew takes out the vowels, you're left with NMR, and that can be uh, retranslated as a Nimri, Nimri the hunter, uh, which is Nimrod the hunter, mentioned in the Bible, same same person most likely. And you, you can point this out with, with others there as well and and even Noah. So uh, I, I'm in agreement with, with uh, you, Joe, and, and John, obviously, um, that uh, the biblical account, is most likely um, something that's been recorded um, and then rewritten uh, by Moses. Um, there's been other accounts that he's relied on, probably directly from those who are involved. I will add one more comment because I've just uh, had a chance to take a couple of minutes to look it up. Dr. Clifford Wilson's work that he donated to us is uh, dealing with legends that predate the uh, Gilgamesh is the the Ebla tablets right so if you want to have a look at the translation of the Ebla tablets by a non-christian author but commented on by dr clifford wilson who was as i said monash university and uh, ran the biblical archaeology society and a great supporter of our ministry the Ebla tablets is what you want to go looking for if you want a a, a a record of a flood which almost matches your biblical record and mm -hmm. it's from just outside of the traditional area of origin of Moses and places like that.